let's say the count. I love the count from Sesame Street. Oh, you can teach me some maths. Vampires are back, baby. Kristen Maldonado here from Pop Culture Planet, and we are at the red carpet of Interview with a Vampire. I would love to know how your character has evolved from season one to season two. Um, well, at the end of season one, particularly in Dubai, uh, the, the, all of the kind of detached uh, confidence that Louis had is gone. Malloy's found him out and is like, okay, now let's get real. And uh, I think it's like a very vulnerable place for him to be. And, um, and he has nothing left. He's got no skin left. So everything is like triggering. Everything is, is scary for him. Um, so yeah, we, we opened the season with Louis in like a very low place. And hopefully he's gonna build that back up and figure out who he is. It's like a journey of self-discovery, which makes it sound way more whimsical than it is. It all pivots at the end of season one. I mean, because all of a sudden I realized that the game is much more serious than I thought it was gonna, I mean, I was just busy focusing on Louis and now I got this other guy I gotta deal with who looks like trouble and turns out to be trouble. And then as we proceed through the season, of course it gets deeper and deeper and deeper into very problematic stuff that is, I, I mean, I'll say this, I do stuff in this show as an actor that I've never done before. Jacob is such a wonderful guy to do scenes with. He'll take you emotionally into these deep waters, which is why I do acting. I mean, I find it to be like I'm being becoming a different person and so it's sort of magical and if you work with partners who are ready to go there it's not everybody is some people just like do fake acting but if they're ready to fly let's fly together and and we fly and he's I all hard that. that guy he's, oh, he's, he's that. wonderful yeah you're in for a wild ride there's a lot more you're going to know about daniel this season very very interesting stuff obviously like in the contemporary in the current day but in the 70s a lot goes down obviously some of you read the book and uh yeah it'll be very interesting to see what happens he's a vision mostly uh until he's not but um so he's evolved in no real tangible way he's actually sort of de-evolved and he's more kind of um, ephemeral and hard to pin down. Yeah, I think uh, Lestat does evolve, um, but it's not the right time to talk about that. Well, we considered the whole thing one giant book, and you know we just we split it down the middle. Um, so, like any other movie, uh, it gets larger and bigger and more ambitious as you get closer and closer to the end. So, in scale and scope. It gets larger. I think in emotional depth, it gets larger. And um, yeah, we took a we took a big swing. Your new addition to the cast. What has it been like joining for season two? It's been the joy of my life. Acting with these guys is a blessing every day to me. The cast in this show are ridiculously nice and so supportive. Um, I'm very blessed to be here. I understand the coven behind these books, and I'm very excited to be a part of it for everyone to see season two. Um, I was very happy that I was able to give Claudia her full arc, and yes, I'm very excited. Your character is very musical. Yeah. What song do you feel soundtracks your character's journey this season? Um, smoking Section by St. Vincent. Yeah. You want to elaborate a little on why? Um, I think the lyrics really spoke to me a lot while we were shooting. Um, and uh, that becomes clearer later on in the season. Ah, I love it. <laughs> little, little hint. Something that I'm very excited about with this show is that it centers, you know, black vampires, vampires of color, um, which I think is something we don't always get to see. What is it like kind of coming into a project like that and getting to represent? I was so blessed, so blessed to be here. And um, when I watched season one, I thought Jacob was phenomenal and I can't imagine another Louis. Um, he really set the tone for me. It's beautiful. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what, what to say other than it's a beautiful thing. Very I feel bad. very proud mm -hmm. to be to be a, a black Creole vampire in this show. Um, yeah, I, just, I mean, I hope that all it does is opens the gates for more. Let's tell more stories. Let's be monsters yes, and yes. enjoy it. Yes. Yeah, let's be problematic. <laughs> 
give us the space to be a problem. Do you have a favorite moment, whether it's you know something that you filmed or just something that was going on on set that you can share? <laughs> Anything that Ben Daniels does, I just adore. I think he is a genius and hilarious. And uh, Delaney Hales is uh, the hero of this season for me. I think she is astonishing and I cannot wait for everyone to watch her and the stuff that she does in the Vampire Theatre. She is a real gift and we're very lucky to have her. I do have a favorite moment, I'm not in it. There's, a, there's, a, there's the scene in, there's the sort of the peak moment in episode five between my younger self played by Luke Field and Asad or uh, Armand. And they really, Armand does this speech that is the one of the most intense speeches I've ever heard on a, any TV show. And yeah, that's my, that, that's a heavy, that's a heavy piece of writing and it's a heavy piece of acting. And it's, I think it's terrific. I don't know how many times I can watch it because it's, it's too, it's almost too much. For me, it's in episode six. I think the, the transformation of Madeline, I think is, uh, the lyrical high point of, of the first two seasons. I love the specter of Lestat in this this season. And Lestat is a very complicated character, as people will see. His very presence is in question. Something I'm also curious about is, you know, the, the greater kind of like Anne Rice world that AMC is working on. And I'm curious if you ever see, you know, other supernatural creatures kind of coming into this world. You have met the man you need to be talking to. This man oversees the entire moral universe for AMC. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, so we're also in the middle of shooting right now Mayfair Witches and developing very serious development of the Talamasca. So we all Anne Rice all the time. Do you think we'll ever see them kind of like cross over? We are beginning, we are beginning the cross-pollination. We're beginning it. I love to hear it. Something I'm dying to know is what does the blood taste like? Is it good? Depends on the blood. We have sticky blood, non-sticky blood. The sticky blood kind of tastes like syrup, so it's not bad. Uh, the, 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 the liquidy blood doesn't really, kind of tastes like medicine, but like minty, not very nice, but not terrible. Shout out to Tammy. Um, she's working on making it sweeter for us. Us. And um, yeah, it's not it's not bad tasting. Our blood comes straight from Chatsworth. It's totally A18. It's the San Fernando Valley, which makes it awesome. Um, and it's uh, the Tower Burger and Company. Um, and yeah, they uh, uh, there's many different. Uh, we got vampire blood. We got human blood. We got about seven different bloods. The substance it changes. So if we're shooting a dark night scene, we use a different blood, and it's in broad daylight or whatever. It's great. Gives we everybody have, a sugar. We have too. gallons. Gallons. Have you guys tried it? No, 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 no. absolutely not. <laughs> the show is an interview with a vampire. So if you could interview any vampire from any fictional world, who would you want to talk to? Claudio. Yeah. I'd love to hear more about what Claudia really thinks. I think she's an extraordinary character, uh, you know, created by Anne Rice and then um, developed by Roland and Hannah. And I just, you know, what a, a horrendous um, dichotomy to be living with uh, that, that her predicament is. And uh, and yeah, I think she is formidable and a force, and I would love to know more. Yeah. It must be tough being a teenager for all eternity. It's a tough time. I mean, but you, yeah, yeah, it is. There's all those crazy hormones that are rushing through your body. Like you're just forever. constantly going through that forever while you're maturing. It's very complex. It's a funny story. Are you ready? Yes. I would, I would interview uh, David Selby from Dark Shadows from the 1960s who I, I worked for when I first came to New York and I'd love to find him again. All the vampires had such a uh, effect on me over the years and I always wanted to be part of a vampire world. So, uh, And I think you'll find that with a bunch of us that we are super fans, and Rice fans. So anyway, yeah, I would, I would go back in time and, and, and interview those guys, the Dark Shadows guys. I would talk to Kirsten Dunst's Claudia. Would you ask her anything in particular? Yeah, what what her blood tasted like back then? <laughs> Probably be George Hamilton from Love, Love, Love for His Bite. Um, I purposely didn't watch a lot of them. Um, what's, the, what's the recent one, though, that you loved? Uh, um, the, um, oh, El Conde. Yeah, El Conde. The, the, the Argentine film uh -huh. that uh, was nominated, actually, for cinematography this year. And it's... Uh, yeah, it's an older, older vampire. It presupposes that 
some of the most despicable national leaders, di dictators, uh, uh, czars, are actually vampires. So, yeah, there, there are plenty of vampires out there. I was going to say Blade, but Blade would just kill Louis. <laughs> so maybe not, maybe not Blade. But like, let's say The Count. I love The Count from Sesame Street. He could teach me some maths. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. That's, that's a really good one. I've got a question for you. Yeah. Only because I never finished it. Is Bella Swan a vampire? She does become one. Okay, I'll go Bella, Bella Swan. Oh. I, yeah, Bella Swan. I love it. I, I, love I it. never saw the last. I never read the book and I didn't see the last movie. Yeah. So I don't actually know what happens. She becomes what well, Bella, what are you doing, Loka? She becomes a vampire. That's what happens. Wow. Okay, so you've just like, that's a spoiler. Yeah, spoiler alert. But that's good because that was a good answer then. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Yes. yes, yes. Bella would be great. What do you think is like the most coveted? vampire ability well somebody asked me something about and I said something about immortality but really it's the it's the biting is is it's just so hot <laughs> I, I, I like it <laughs> Flying. I'd love to fly. I would have a very individual one. I would not like to get sick, ever. No common colds for this vampire. That's what I would enjoy. <laughs> and I think a lot of people would jump at living forever. Not at all. Not at all. That's, that's no, no, the one that will convince me not to become a vampire. <laughs> Although you're halfway there, my child. It's, it's, it's got to be flying, right? Yeah, it's got to be flying. I think the flying is, is, is supposed to be scary. So Anne Rice always said that the vampires were terrified of flying. And I think the closest we probably get to it is like putting a VA, VR headset on. Um, but yeah, flying. Yeah. Consider subscribing if you like this video and get even more entertainment news at popcultureplanet.net. See ya!